Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seam Lund and in this video I want to talk about how did I build about 12 to 13 or 14 kilograms of muscle by eating only one meal a day. And I've been doing that for the last five years or so. I've been doing intermittent fasting itself for up to eight years and despite that I've still managed to see this uh, gradual progression in my muscle mass and strength uh, despite eating uh, one meal a day. So in this video I'm going to talk about how did I do it, what is my routine right now, and uh, what else you can you learn about muscle growth as well as intermittent fasting. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! This picture on the uh, left is where I started to do uh, a more like a one meal a day diet uh, version uh, and uh, transitioned over from the 16 and 8 method to this uh, version that I created myself. I'll describe it how it works uh, shortly. Uh, but yeah, on the right is uh, where, I've, where I've been doing that for maybe uh, one year or so and on the left I'm maybe 22, 21 years old, somewhere between there and on the uh, right I'm uh, 23, 24 years old. This is another year, maybe like the second and third year of doing that one meal a day diet. On the left I'm maybe 24 uh, years old, uh, 23, somewhere between there and my weight here on the left was maybe 75, 76, 77 kilograms or something like that. And on the right is uh, the fourth year, uh, third or fourth year in between there. And my weight here is about 78 and 79 kilograms. These are kind of the uh, more recent ones. On the left, I weigh uh, 85. And on the right, I was the kind of the heaviest, 86 uh, kilograms. And these are uh, 2021. This picture is kind of the latest the picture that I've taken. I am a bit leaner. Uh, here on the uh, on these pictures I weigh about like 84 kilograms or something like that so it's a bit uh, less body weight than on this one but yeah it's still uh, year five of uh, doing one minute diet you crazy son of a bitch you did so how did I did it I'm gonna start off with uh, basically describing the process of uh, muscle growth itself and uh, what are the main criteria what are the main factors that contribute to do that Generally, you know, whether or not you build muscle or lose muscle is determined by the balance between muscle growth and muscle breakdown on a 24-hour period. And your, your body is always, you know, synthesizing protein and breaking it down in some aspects and uh, cycling on a daily basis between the activities that you do. Muscle synthesis is, is uh, promoted by things like, you know, uh, eating protein, eating calories, even resistance training uh, does that. And muscle breakdown is governed by, you know, fasting, calorie restriction, low protein intake, excess cardio, and those kinds of things. And if you are in a surplus, then you will end up uh, building uh, muscle. And if you're in a decline deficit in terms of the breakdown, then uh, you will lose muscle. How much protein can your body synthesize in a given meal is limited uh, to a particular amount of protein. So, uh, yeah, if you eat, let's say, 20 grams of protein, then you will stimulate as much protein synthesis as you would if you ate 40 grams of protein and 30 grams or 50 grams or 60 grams. So if you are eating your entire day's worth of protein in one meal, like 100 to 150 grams in one meal, then you're not going to see this exponentially higher expression of protein synthesis compared to eating only 20 or 30 grams of protein because it kind of caps off, it hits a threshold after which you don't see increased protein synthesis. And that obviously will impose some limitations to eating one meal a day or two meals a day even because um, you're not going to be able to compensate for the lack of uh, protein intake during the fasted window even if you are eating your entire day's worth of protein in one meal uh, compared to eating them uh, that same amount of protein spread out so if you spread out your protein then uh, you're going to naturally be able to stimulate the protein synthesis uh, more often so this is the exact uh, picture that i described four meals if you eat 40 grams of protein four times a day, which is gonna considered to be the optimal amount or the maximum uh, required amount for naturals to uh, maximize uh, protein, protein synthesis uh, with meals, uh, four meals, then uh, yeah, you will stimulate the protein synthesis four times a day and uh, keeps the body in this uh, relatively anabolic state all the time. Whereas if you do it twice a day or once a day, then even if you're eating 75 grams, let's say per meal, then uh, you're not going to be uh, stimulating more protein synthesis than you would by eating 40 grams or 30 or 20 grams. So uh, yeah, obviously if you want to maximize muscle growth and muscle hypertrophy, then having a higher eating frequency is gonna be uh, relevant. And uh, it is true that eating only one meal a day is hard. It's uh, gonna be harder to build muscle with, uh, although it's still possible. And uh, that's why, you know, I personally don't think that the regular one meal a day diet where you are literally eating only one meal a day 
is uh, optimal or suitable for muscle growth. Uh, I've, I've tried the regular one meal a day where you are literally only eating one meal a day within like an hour or so, and it's not um, as effective as uh, other versions, as, as, at least for like muscle growth. And that's why I've also created my own version of the one meal a day diet, which I call targeted intermittent fasting. And essentially what it is, is that uh, you still eat one meal a day, you eat the majority of the calories in one meal, but during the daytime, you have like a protein shake. Um, either like before a workout or usually during the workout. I personally usually take it during the workout. And uh, the goal is to stimulate, to provide another surge of protein synthesis for, you know, protein synthesis and the muscle growth, as well as reduce the breakdown. Because if you were to be working out fasted and working out without any protein and amino acids in your system, then you would be naturally be more uh, catabolic in terms of breaking down more mus muscle protein. Uh, whereas if you have this uh, protein in your system, then uh, you're naturally going to help with um, the anabolic processes that are required for growth. And this has been like the best thing <laughs> for um, my physique development in terms of being able to uh, still practice one meal a day and at the same time progress in uh, my uh, like, you know, strength and uh, muscle mass. It's definitely, may it may not be better than like two meals a day. It may not be better than four meals a day. Uh, but it like, at least it works for me. Like I just like to do one meal a day because of the convenience and not having to worry about eating. And the protein shake is just like a quick fix to uh, still uh, make sure that I'm uh, able to make gains <laughs> at the same time. Awesome. So how does it look like? Uh, for me, it's uh, generally like this. So this is the pre-workout period, which uh, usually lasts like uh, maybe 16 to 18 hours approximately 18 hours every day. So I fast 18 hours every day. Then I break the fast with this protein shake usually has 30 grams of protein, like a one scoop of whey protein and some essential amino acids, uh, which will also help with uh, the same as the protein with more uh, this uh, anabolism and reducing uh, catabolism. Plus I also add like some creatine, maybe some, uh, you know, some pre-workout supplements like uh, citrulline, dextrose, not dextrose, but um, D ribose and those kinds of things. Uh, then I have the workout which is around maybe hour 18 until 20, something like that. I wait a few hours after the workout as well, maybe an hour or two. And then I break my fast with uh, the one meal, one meal a day. And that's maybe like 2000 calories or something. And the first protein shake is like 150, 200 calories at max. Then I break the fast. I eat these higher protein foods, eggs, meats, fish, uh, plus some veggies, carbs, like potatoes or rice and uh, berries and fruit. And uh, this will provide the majority of my calories as well as the majority of my protein. But this uh, smaller surge of protein is still very important uh, for um, governing muscle anabolism and uh, muscle repair at the same time. As you can see, like I'm not eating a massive amount of calories, like 2000 calories, 2200 calories uh, is pretty average. It's uh, kind of uh, regular. It's not the high metabolic rate, it's not the low metabolic rate. And I would imagine that if I had to eat like 3000 calories <laughs> with one meal a day, then it would be for sure quite difficult. But 2000 calories is still uh, quite manageable. Uh, or it's not, yeah, maybe 1800 in, in some cases. And it's still quite manageable because the meats and eggs and uh, fish, they're still uh, higher in calories than uh, like celery or uh, broccoli and things like that. If I had to eat like a plant-based diet, maybe it would be much more difficult because of... Um, having this massive amount of fiber and uh, low-calorie volume foods uh, in my stomach <laughs> sitting. How much protein do I eat? Uh, I personally think that I, I haven't like accurately measured it, but I think that I eat, eat around uh, at least 2 grams per, per kilogram. So I weigh uh, 84 kilograms and that means I eat 100 and, uh, 168 grams at least and upward to 2.4. Uh, so that would be maybe 180 or 190 grams of protein, something like that. The minimum recommended uh, intake for maximal muscle growth is about 1.6 grams per kilogram. And uh, the higher intakes above 2.4 grams up to 3.0 grams per kilogram, um, they don't contribute additional muscle growth. You don't need to uh, eat more protein than 2.4 grams to build more muscle. But the research does find that uh, the uh, fat gain is a bit less if you do uh, have this uh, crazy higher intake of protein because the protein is very thermogenic and you uh, burn a lot of calories for digesting that protein. So on some days I may even go, yeah, 2.8 grams, 3.0 grams, um, but not on a regular basis. Most of the time I'm still like 2.0, 2.4 grams per kilogram. 
from the percentage perspective, uh, I think that our protein intake some, is somewhere between 30 to 40 percent uh, protein. So it is a very high protein uh, intake because of, you know, although your body doesn't stimulate protein synthesis above this uh, 20 to 40 gram threshold, you can still absorb the rest of the protein. You know, your body is not going to waste it away. There are ways to slow down the intake of that protein. You absorb it slower. And because of that, you can stay in this anabolic state actually for longer because you're going to release those amino acids into your bloodstream even later down the line when you're fasting. So eating a low protein diet is very bad if you're doing this one meal a day diet or any kind of intermittent fasting because you need those amino acids to uh, prevent muscle loss and sarcopenia. And because you are eating only once or twice a day, then uh, you need to make sure that you do provide enough of these amino acids and protein to uh, build muscle and maintain it. I love protein. What are the mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy? So uh, there are three main um, contributors. Mechanical tension is basically progressive overload and the amount of force your body produces when you are doing resistance training. So this is by far the most biggest uh, factor. It uh, stimulates the most the hypertrophy and uh, is the one that you should focus on the most. So uh, just increasing the number of weight that you lift. Metabolic stress is uh, essentially the burn feeling causing like uh, micro trauma and uh, the pump, the burn, that kind of thing. It does contribute to muscle hypertrophy, but it's not nearly as important as mechanical tension. Bodybuilders, and if you are solely focused on hypertrophy, then you should focus a bit more on metabolic stress for sure. But you, you shouldn't neglect mechanical tension because the majority of results are going to come from that. And lastly is muscle damage, which describes things like eccentrics, increased range of motion and novelty. So uh, if your body is doing something new, then it's gonna it's not used to that yet and it will also experience more damage uh, from that. So uh, yeah, it's a good idea to do, you know, pay attention to all these factors, but the main focus should also be mechanical tension and progressive overload. Training frequency. I really like a high frequency training. I've been doing uh, this high frequency, like training at least four times a week for, yeah, again, five to seven years now, uh, mainly, mainly because I like it. I like to train, but also, um, having this higher frequency of training may be a bit better for uh, muscle growth as well because if you let's say train only twice a week then you train legs twice a week you bump up muscle protein synthesis in the legs in monday then it stays elevated for approximately like 48 hours or something and then by wednesday it's gone it's not building any more muscle because the stimulus has wear worn off so and you train it again bam, you uh, repeat a cycle and it wars off for a few days later as well. Compared to training a muscle four times a week, you train legs, boom, the protein synthesis goes up, it goes down, but you boom, you hit it again, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so uh, that's that's how a high frequency training can end up building uh, more muscle, or not maybe more muscle, but at least like you can build it a bit faster because you're keeping the signal for muscle protein synthesis in that muscle group alive the entire week if you train every other day, for example. What are the best exercises? Well, the compound lifts uh, generally provide the biggest stimulus because they uh, tax the entire body or more muscle groups. They're also general. You can overload them more easily. You can add more weight, thus increase progressive overload and mechanical tension. And uh, they also uh, tend to release the most, uh, you know, testosterone and growth hormone and those kinds of things because of the same reason you are using more muscle groups. And all the compound lifts, the, the basics, squats, deadlift, pull up, bench press, overhead press, dips. Yeah, I've been doing those exercises <laughs> for, yeah, eight to ten years regularly and uh, these are the best uh, exercises instead of doing like you know let's say walking lunges or uh, donkey kicks or uh, biceps curls yeah for sure it's a good idea to have some accessories uh, but the main focus should still be on the compound lifts and the progressive overload in those yeah, buddy! and that's it that's exactly what i do uh, i eat one meal a day i fast maybe um Around 20 hours, I break my fast with a protein shake. I have a workout, usually resistance training with weights or calisthenics. It's a kind of a compound lift workout focusing on strength and hypertrophy. Then after the workout, I uh, wait maybe an hour or two. I break my fast completely with, uh, you know, real food. And I eat a high protein intake with eggs, meats, some carbs, uh, potatoes, um, those kinds of things. And later, after that, you know, I'll have a good night's sleep as well, <laughs> optimize my recovery, uh, and that's how I do it. Uh, yeah, so generally, it's not, yeah, like one meal a day, but it's like a, one and a half meals, <laughs> if you want to be, you know, picky about it. So, but it's essentially still the 150 calories from the protein shake isn't a significant amount of calories to uh, break the fast completely. And uh, even if it did, I would still do this version 
that I am doing because of like the convenience. It's very simple. I like it. I see results from it. And uh, yeah, I don't plan on uh, stopping, <laughs> at least for not, to, for not for the time being. If you want to know how I do it, if you want to know all the details about this targeted intermittent fasting and what foods to eat, then uh, check out my book, Metabolic Autophagy. Or I also have the uh, Metabolic Autophagy video course that uh, has 13 hours of uh, video content about uh, all these kinds of processes. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.